So let's take a second to talk about the electrical field. Um, in a previous video we talked about how electrical forces were very similar to gravitational forces. Well it turns out an electrical field is um, there are some parallels you can draw to a gravitational field. Um, at first glance you might look at an electrical field um, and how I'm explaining it and say that it's kinda useless um, but it's actually got a lot of purposes to it. We can view a lot about what's going on by looking at what we call electric field lines. Um, and that's a visual way of representing um, the electrical field because it is something that is invisible. Just like with gravity, um, we cannot see it acting on the object, so it helps to have kind of an electrical field idea. Um, and a lot of people think of the electrical field as... Um, kind of as if you were to put an object into the electrical field. So think of the gravitational field as this is how strong it would be pulling on an object if that object existed. It's the same idea for an electrical field. This is how strong the force would be if that object existed. Um, and the first thing to note about the electrical field is that it's denoted by a capital E. Um, and it turns out that the electrical field is actually defined as the force per charge. So we would figure out the electrical force and then we would divide it by that test charge. Um, so this is one way of writing the electrical field. Another alternate way of writing it is that E is equal to, and if you actually do a little bit of algebra with this right here, E is equal to K times Q1 over R squared. So if you'll notice this is the exact same equation for the electrical force, just we got rid of one of the charges, which is like right here. Um, it's actually the same thing for when we calculated the gravitational field as well, except instead of dividing by a charge, you're dividing by a mass in that case. Um, so the electrical field, um, it's you can calculate how strong that field is, and the units that it's going to be in is newtons, because that's the unit for force, per coulomb, because that's the unit for charge. So these are the units, those SI units for an electrical field. Um, first thing that it's useful for is drawing electrical field lines. So let's go ahead and take a moment, and I've got four different situations here. I've got a proton, which has a positive charge to it. So I don't know if we can see that color yet. Positive charge to it. So all the blue ones are positive charges. And then an electron, which is a negative charge. So I'm going to go ahead and put negative charges inside of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to represent what the field around this proton looks like. Um, we as scientists have decided that when we're drawing these electrical field lines, if we draw lines close together, that means that it's a strong field. So if you've got really, really close lines, that means it's a strong field. Whereas if you've got just a few lines spaced out, then it's a relatively weak field. Um, this is a little bit confusing because you can actually draw as many lines or as few lines as you want to. But if you've got two different pictures next to each other, you should be able to tell the relative strength of those fields based off of how close the lines are. Um, so let's go ahead and draw with that proton. So these electrical fields just are lines, basically, that go out. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines here. And this signifies that there's a field all around it. Now, if I'm being absolutely perfect with this, I would draw evenly spaced lines as you go through because all these lines are coming away from the proton. We've decided that if you've got a positive charge, these field lines are moving away. So if we could kind of do a stop motion video of this, we would actually see that these field lines would be emanating away from the proton. Now they end up having to go somewhere and we've again decided that all of those field lines go into an electron. So I'm going to try and be a little bit better with evenly spacing these. So as they leave a proton, they'll go through space, do whatever they do, and then come into an electron. So all of these field lines are going into. You, you can imagine them leaving this guy and coming into the electron. Um, so this is just the very, very basic field lines. Ideally, if I had enough space, I would draw these lines infinitely outward, and you would see that these field lines, or sorry, these electrical fields get weaker as you leave that space. Because as we extend further and further, these lines are now getting farther apart. Closer to the proton, you've got a stronger electrical field, and as you move farther apart, 
or as these lines move farther apart, the field is getting weaker because of this convention we set up. Um, so now we can look at what's called a dipole. So if we've got a proton and an electron in a relatively close area, uh, we know that the field lines will go away from positive charges and into negative charges. So we're going to start by drawing a line straight through there because they're actually attracted, um, or those lines are going to go from one to the other. Now if we try and draw this exact same picture here, we'll start drawing the line out. But what this field wants to do is actually find that negative charge. So it's going to curve back around until it comes into the negative charge. And something else will come down here. And as we draw these lines outward, they're going to start coming around and trying to meet back to that negative charge. All these lines want to come into the negative charge. And we'll see them start to come up and around every single line. And then we've got some lines out here, so it's not going to be attracted to it, just simply because there's something else probably farther out back there that it can come at. But all of these lines, same thing here, all of these lines are going to kind of bend towards that negatively charged particle. So what happens if you've got two negatively charged particles? Well, in this case, no line is going to go straight from one to the other because they're not leaving those negative charges. They're coming into the negative charges. So we've got a line out here saying, hey, I'm coming into you. Same thing over here. We've got a line coming into there. But then we actually have the line that would be coming in from here comes in from the side because it's trying to get away and it's trying to dodge both of these negative charges. So we've got these field lines kind of bending around it as they try and stay away from each other and try not to meet into each other. Oop, and I just crossed those lines, but that'll be okay. And they're all kind of bending away from that other negatively charged object. And as I've drawn it, because I'm not perfect, it looks like the field is stronger over here, um, but it just looks a lot more cramped over here than it should be. But the general idea is you've got kind of this area where nothing is going on because it's not being pulled either way. They're kind of bending into those electrons there. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is a visual representation of those electric fields. Um, so let's go ahead and do an actual calculation with it because it's not all just about can you understand what would happen, it's about can you calculate what would happen. So go ahead and take a moment to see if you can solve or read this problem and get an idea of it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is just draw myself a little thing. We've got a little picture with a negatively charged object. Um, we already know that all these field lines should be coming into the negatively charged object because of that convention that we have. So I can go ahead and say what the direction of it is. I know that the direction is uh, towards the object. So towards the object. Um, now we got to calculate the magnitude, and we can do so by using the equation from the very first bit. So k times the charge of the object times the distance, or sorry, divided by the distance squared. In this case, the charge on the object is negative 15 nanocoulombs. So that n is nano. Um, let me go ahead and the q is equal to negative 15 nanocoulombs, where nano is times 10 to the negative ninth. And then our distance is going to be 5 millimeters, which we need to convert into our standard, sorry, SI unit, which is 0 0.005 meters. And now it's just game of substitute and solve. K, we've learned previously, is 9 times 10 to the ninth. The Q, we've already decided, is negative 15 times 10 to the negative ninth and our distance is 0 0.005 and don't forget we're going to need to square that so the electrical field strength on here uh, when you plug it all into your calculator be very very careful with those uh, sorry with the scientific notation 
we'll actually end up with 5.4 times 10 to the 6. And if we remember, our units are newtons per coulomb. So that is the field strength of this negative 15 nanocoulomb charge um, at a distance of 5 millimeters. And again, the direction of the field is going to be towards the object. Uh, so that's a quick idea of how you can actually plug into the equations and what those field lines should look like.